I know hating on Streamlabs right now is the cool and easy thing to do for a lot of us YouTubers or many streamers out there, but that's not why I'm doing this. I'm, I'm making this video because it is a perfect sequel. <laughs> I almost said prequel. Sequel to the video I recently made the worst take on open source I've ever seen, which was an opinion article about why someone dislikes open source, but I really kind of tore it apart because that opinion was based on falsehoods and he stated things as facts, which were indeed false, which would mean they were not facts. Because it's okay for someone to dislike something or like something, but when that opinion is based on falsehoods and you write an entire article about it, proving how little you know about open source, but you have the strong opinion on it, well, you're gonna get criticized a little bit, and that's what I did. But one in particular part of that, I kind of agreed with, and that was how you don't really have that much protection over your code because it is public. And if someone wants to take that code and repackage it and not have their product open source, how are you gonna know that that code is yours if they change it up just enough? And there's this whole, there's a lot going on there. And I discussed it a little bit more in that video. And the main argument there is licenses. As long as you can enforce those licenses, which in whichever country that the two parties are in, the original author as well as the person who took the open source software, but the license itself allows for a lot of freedom. And this directly correlates to the whole Streamlabs versus OBS debacle. And if you haven't heard about that, we're gonna get into that in a second, but that's really what this video is about. Some of the problems with open source and what you can expect from some people some companies who aren't really for open source, but they'll gladly take your open source project for their own personal benefit. And well, that's the main topic I wanna to talk about in this video, as well as some of the other shady stuff Streamlabs has done. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So if you don't know, there's this entire controversy around Streamlabs right now. It is brought to light by this company, Lightstream, and how not only did Streamlabs rip off their entire product, but their entire promotional website, which we will get into a little bit later in this video and how Streamlabs has actually done this with countless of other companies. And that's basically the entire Streamlabs catalog is ripping off other products. But I wanna talk about Streamlabs OBS and OBS. Now, keep in mind that Streamlabs has now renamed Streamlabs OBS or slobs as they would call it to remove the OBS name. So what is OBS? OBS is open broadcasting software. That's what it stands for. If you've ever seen my camera a little bit off kilter over there where you could actually see my monitors, you may have seen something that was basically a duplicate of my main monitor or it was picking up my webcam and from the side and basically that's that's OBS. It records whatever I want. Right now it's recording my audio, it is recording my screen, and if I wanted to I could also activate the webcam so it records that, but you can also use it in all the same manner but for live streaming. You just hook it up to your Twitch or your YouTube and you can live stream with it. And that's basically what OBS is. And take the name Open Broadcast Software, you can probably come to the conclusion that it is free and open source. It's a great piece of software. It's the one that I felt was the best after doing all of my research, however many years ago when I started using it. And it has a GPL license on it, so you and I could fork it and create our own version on top of OBS, adding this feature, making this one a little bit different, changing the overall look of it, whatever it may be. And that's exactly what Streamlabs did legally. They're above board when it comes to the GPL license. Ethically, on the other hand, not so much. One of the big things and big problems with it is that they don't care about open source or giving back to the open source community. They just wanted an easy way to copy someone's code. And this was open source and free. So, hey, let's just copy OBS code and change it up a little bit and provide ours free and open source. But we're going to upsell our users of the Streamlabs OBS on all of our other products, which again, all of their other products are copies of other products, but more on that later. So that's one of the big problems is that they don't, they don't, care to improve something and give it back to the open source community and those who are going to use it. They just wanted to reskin it, maybe add a feature here and there, which again, I think the regular OBS is better than slobs, but I guess to each their own. But the only reason they did that is to benefit themselves in order to upsell the other products, eventually make money with it is what I'm trying to say. Which when it comes to making money or competition, I don't have any problem with that. But when it comes to the open source community and just taking advantage of it or copying a product one for one, not just the product, but the look of the product, the features, even the promotional page, 
that's where I have a bit of a problem with it. But not only did Streamlabs copy OBS, reskin it in order to have their own version of it to upsell their other products, but they also marketed it, marketed it in a way that it appeared that they were affiliated or even the same thing as OBS because they used OBS in their name, which is what OBS is saying, hey, we said you couldn't use this in your official name, but you did so anyway, which is a little bit messed up. And not only did they disregard OBS wishes, but if you used to, not anymore, you typed in OBS in Google, the top search would be an ad like normal, but it would be for Streamlabs OBS. And they wrote it in a way, especially at the end there, that it appeared that this was in fact OBS or at least affiliated with it, which it was not. It is just a derivative of it because OBS is open source. And just to be clear, OBS did initially give them permission to use OBS on their repository name, but apparently along the way, they asked if they could use OBS on their official name and OBS said no, but they did so anyway, Streamlabs. So not only did they take the OBS name and use it for themselves to try to trick individuals, but even further proving that they were attempting to trick individuals with this tactic is the ad that I just mentioned, which is shady practice. And they don't care about providing free and open source software or an improved version of the original repository. They just wanted it to upsell their other products by basically sending alerts and emails to all the users of Streamlabs OBS saying, hey, check out our other product, uh, check out our other product, which actually is a paid product. And that's really the problem with open source, or at least my main concern with open source. Because while you can have these licenses and everything like that, you can't really control your code because it is in fact open source. I understand that's not the idea, but there's always gonna be someone or some company out there taking advantage of that for their own personal gain while you don't get any of it. As a matter of fact, Streamlabs, with the main product being Streamlabs OBS back in 2019, sold to Logitech for, what, a million dollars? That's a lot for just reskinning an open source project, no, 89 million dollars 89 million dollars logitech paid for a reskinned version of obs with the name streamlabs in front of it and all of this really came to light right now because they copied another product lightstream studio and lightstream studio didn't really take light of that because not only did they copy the product overall but they also copied the promotional website i mean streamlabs can you not like come up with anything unique Anyway, Lightstream put out a tweet in the format of, hey, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up enough so the teacher doesn't notice. And that was this. This is the Lightstream promotional website for their Lightstream studio, which as you can see, provides a way for people to stream directly from their Xbox or their PlayStation. And this is the promotional website for Streamlabs studio, which as you can see, is the same website. They just changed up a border radius here, a color there, but barely any wording anywhere. Maybe they changed it from PlayStation and Xbox to console, but everything else is exactly the same, even down to the testimonials, the same exact wording, the same, it's, it's the same. They copy and pasted, and they did come out and say, actually, this was just placeholder text. We were going to change it. This wasn't meant to go to production, which really means that you actually copied and pasted the website. Like you just admitted to it by saying this was just placeholder text and we meant to change it. That, that doesn't help your case. I don't know why they said that. That doesn't help to say, yeah, well, you're not copying. It's like, no, we meant to change it so y'all wouldn't notice we were copying. This wouldn't even come to light if y'all at least made the promotional website your own, let alone copying the product itself. And you know where I'm going with this. This is not the first time Streamlabs has done this. In fact, their entire catalog is just copies of other products. So let's quickly go through these. There's a company called Combo, joincombo.com, with that saves time editing your videos, edit your stream content, and convert to TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram in a few clips. It does exactly that. Here's your stream, you clip it out, and you're able to easily create that into a nice little clip for those platforms. And then Streamlabs comes out with uh, cross clip. Convert your Twitch clips into TikTok videos, Instagram reels, and you guessed it, YouTube shorts. As you can see, it's the exact same thing. At least they changed up the website a little bit this time. But the product itself, it's the same thing. And there's another streaming company called Restream.io. Live stream to 30 plus platforms simultaneously. Now, I don't think this is the best way to go about streaming. I think you should like focus and really be involved in Twitch and your Twitch chat or YouTube and your YouTube chat and kind of go about it that way. But that's another discussion for another day. This is a way for you to go through Restream. You stream using Restream and they 
put it up to your YouTube, your Twitch, your Facebook, and I guess 27 plus other platforms than those that I just mentioned. And then Streamlabs comes out with multi-stream, reach multiple audiences, stream to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and more at once. It's the same thing. And then there's this other video creation platform called Frame.io. They actually recently sold to Adobe for over a billion dollars. So there's definitely a market for this and one that Streamlabs definitely wants to be a part of. And that is why they created Oslo, video review and collaboration tools for YouTubers. Wait, what is this? Video review and collaboration software. So they basically stole that. <laughs> but as you can see, this is what Frame.io is the actual company that came here first that sold to Adobe. They have this, you know, you upload your video and if it's a promotional video, you work a part of a team that's creating this commercial for the iPhone X or phone X and you can collaborate. You can say, hey, this opening is perfect at this particular time. I'll brighten up the shadows here or maybe I don't like this music or we should change this or that, whatever it may be. And so you can watch a video, give your feedback on that video within your team and then make the changes and go from there. And then Oslo, on the other hand, well, is the same exact thing with the same exact format. It's the same thing. And they also have a direct copy of Linktree, which if you don't know, it's a link that you put in your Twitter bio or Instagram bio, and it brings you to a landing page that has all of your other links. So your YouTube link, your Instagram link, your Facebook link, your website link, because you can't link all of that in your bio. And they named that Willow. Linktree, Willow, Weeping Willow is a tree you almost got by me there, Streamlabs, but we know what you did. We know what you did there. It's the same thing. And even the name is a willow tree, link tree. Come on. And since they're in the streaming biz, of course, they had to make their own platform where you can buy stream overlays, which there are various other ones like Nerd or Die, where you can do the same thing. And I can't go without mentioning the simple fact that a lot of this is currently in beta, which means a lot of this is happening under Logitech, and I understand how it works. Streamlabs is its own company, and it just so happens to be owned by Logitech because they bought them out two years ago. However, when it comes to this, when it comes to copying a product one for one, feature for feature, even up to the promotional website, Logitech needs to have a little bit, little bit more oversight to ensure that they aren't just directly copying unless Logitech is perfectly okay with it. They can kind of plead ignorance if they want and say, oh, we didn't know that Streamlabs was doing this. We kind of let them work independently to have their creative juices flowing, which I don't know what creativity is going on over there since they're just copying one for one products. Anyway, <laughs> Streamlabs has always been this type of company. That's how they sold to Logitech in the first place. They reskinned OBS, maybe changed a little bit here and there, and then started using that to gain a user base to sell them other products, and that's why they sold to Logitech, and continuing to copy products, open source or not. That is their whole entire business model. But to be clear, I mean, I do kind of like Logitech products. They're pretty good, but um, have a little bit more oversight over Streamlabs. Streamlabs itself is just obviously not a very um, ethical company in regards to the open source community or the developer community because if you're going to be creating software make it your own don't just copy someone else's software and i'm not i don't have a problem with competition in the software space but directly copying feature for feature look for look the exact product for product and even the promotional page for your promotional page and the wording on that promotional page look that's a bit extensive create your own Make up your own. That's how you should be making it in the developer space and the software space and all that, but who am I? And this isn't me dragging Streamlabs through the mud. This is Streamlabs dragging Streamlabs through the mud. I just happen to be one of the many individuals finally pointing it out because honestly, I didn't even know about this until it came to light and until I saw all of these Twitter posts and whatnot and all of these different articles about it. So I just felt like I had to point out all of those other instances of them just I mean, this is their entire catalog, mind you, not like just a few from their catalog of them just copying product for product because I didn't want to just make the video about them copying and selling and a reskin version of OBS and how they did it in a bit of an unethical manner, not even a bit of it, a straight up unethical manner. They did everything by the book in terms of the open source license, but in terms of ethics, Again, not so much. But the main point that I really wanted to make, I made earlier in this video, and that is the problem with open source, or at least my biggest concern, is that while your intentions are good, 
and most individuals in the community's intentions are good. There are always going to be those outliers that take advantage of you providing the open source software, just like Streamlabs did to OBS, disregarding any request or wish that OBS has of them, and then turning around and selling this reskinned open source software for $89 billion. I ain't got a problem with people selling their own software. Like if OBS wanted to sell their software, I guess for $89 million, then did I say billion before? $89 million, then okay. Or whatever private proprietary software, whatever. But the way they did it, they didn't create the software, but somehow they reaped the benefits and the rewards of this software. It's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. I just had to talk about it considering we just made that video about open source software and that's that. I'm sure I missed some things that I know I wanted to discuss in this video, but that's what I have for now. So hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe, hit the bell if you're already subscribed. Next video should be about improving the dislike count code because right now there's some bugs, there's some concerns, some issues that I want to discuss and some pull requests that I need to test out to see if I can pull over into the master branch but more on that next video. Goodbye.